Let's lay down a few ground rules, shall we? If we're gonna get anywhere in this matter, you're gonna have to start telling me the truth. I never lied to you. Oh, come on. I have the sales contract right here. Your purchase of the least gourmet foods. And let me tell you, I've read every word, including the fine print. Then you know I've been wrong. Will you come off it? This contract with your signature on the bottom specifically states that you bought the least gourmet foods machinery as is. As is is an exact term, and it has great meaning in court. Tell me, what are you getting at? Just this. That you knew damn well that machinery was falling apart when you signed that purchase agreement. Yet you deliberately told me that you did not. In other words, you lied to me. I don't take that from anyone, especially my clients. What are you suggesting? Just this. That you are totally responsible for the claims made against you in this suit. I strongly suggest that you settle out of court. That would cost me a fortune. A jury could cost you a lot more. Is there any other way out of this? Not legally, and that's the only way I play the game, pal. Well, look, I admire that. I really do. I am so glad that I have a lawyer with some integrity. You also have a lawyer that will not let his clients lie to him. You don't know what kind of pressure I'm under. Dan wants me to replace the roof of the Belize building. Did he say why? He found a couple of holes in it. So he wants me to replace the entire roof so that it won't rain on the machinery that I don't even have yet. Well, he has the right. I suggest you do it. Oh, and I suppose you also suggest that I do all the things that Rick Weber wants me to do. Replace thousands and thousands of dollars worth of machinery. Yes, 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 do it, if you want to reopen your factory. Yeah, that's right, I do want to reopen it, but I'm not going to go broke in the process. Well, I'm afraid you have no choice. You have to comply. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? That's what I said. Maybe. I will work things out with him. And when I do, Dan will go right along. Just what do you mean by work things out? There were ways to get things done, Counselor. They don't teach you in law school. Well, they teach us this in law school. As attorney to client, I've given you my best advice. I've told you what you need to do. Do it. Hey, I guess. Oh, hi. Jackie, well, this is a surprise. It is. Well, well I mean, a pleasant surprise. Of what, from what Tommy tells me, you spend most of your time rehearsing your band. Oh, well, yeah, that's true, yeah. Must be very exciting. Yeah, it's all very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, is Rick around? I came down to see him. Oh, I think he's on four. Let me check. Uh, Thank you. Jess, I'm going to be in Dan's office. Uh, good to see you again, Blackie. Nice seeing you. I can't wait to hear your band. Thanks. Dr. Perez, report to radiology. Blackie, I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Jesse just buzzed me in. There's no hurry. No, hey, I'm looking forward to it. Meeting Steffi, helping with the contract if I can. Jesse, we're going to be at Jake Meyer's office if you need me for anything. All right. Okay, I have no idea how long it's going to be. Let's go, Krupa. Listen, I just kind of want to tell you that we're going to take care of those problems as soon as possible. Let me ask you something. How much longer do you think you're going to be able to keep your crew hanging around? Hey, I'm with you. It's those city hall troublemakers. They, I have had it up to here with them. I don't know who's worse, them or the nitpicking lawyer. Yeah, well, we've had it up to here, too. I hear nothing but grapes down there every single day. They're living off their hope. They're living off their savings. Let me tell you something. I think those guys are right. They're beginning to wonder. How much longer are you going to hang on before you reopen that plant? Nobody wants to reopen that plant more than I do. It's just those jokers over at City Hall, they got me over a barrel. I mean, I replaced the seamer. Yeah. Now they want me to replace all the machinery. They want me to replace the roof. Who knows what else? Can't you get it through them that our families are hurting like hell? They won't listen to me. 
They won't listen. They don't care about you guys starving. All they do is go by the book, and in the book it's written somewhere that they want my blood. Well, that's just great. Why don't you tell that to my wife and kids? Next payday, I come home with no check in my pocket. We could be in our home, a way that I won't go broke. How? Oh, pressure. Pressure for men like you. What do you mean? It's simple. You take your case to the authorities. And how do you do that? You tell them just what you told me. You tell them about their rules and regulations, how they're starving you and starving the kids. They're gonna listen to me, right? They'll do more than listen to you. If you and men like you speak up, they will let us operate. All right, what do we do? You go to the health commissioner. His name is Dr. Rick Weber. And? And you tell him what you told me. You tell him you can't do without another paycheck. You tell him your wife and kids are starving. You tell him the whole story. I think they'll listen to you. Okay, Laura, send her in. Okay, boys, here we go. And don't forget, if you don't understand something, say nothing. Sure. Hi. Steffi. Hi, I'm Rick Weber. And this is Jake Meyer. And of course, Hi. you know, Black. Nice to meet Hi you. Hi there. Here, sit down. Hey. I'm very flattered. Three handsome gentlemen giving me all this attention. You know, when Blackie mentioned Dr. Weber, I expected a much older man. You must be so proud of Blackie, Doctor. Well, I've been proud of Blackie for quite some time. Of course, you know why we're having this meeting today. That's because mm. I would like to see his contract. Blackie's contract? Yes. Gee, I'm real sorry. That's too bad. See, I've already sent it to Mr. Pirelli for his signature. I'm afraid I don't even have a copy. <clears throat> Blackie, do you have a set? No. Huh. Well, it just so happens that I've read it over very carefully. I'm sure we're all aware that there's a 60-day release clause. I'm sorry, Mr. Meyer. I really hope you understand, but legal mumbo-jumbo is totally beyond me. I know talent like our Blackie here, but when it comes to contracts, well, I'm at a complete loss. I'll leave that to Mr. Pirelli. A 60-day release clause means that if Blackie's career is going nowhere in that amount of time, well, then he's free. Is that all it is? Well, we certainly don't have to worry about that, do we? Why is that? Well, Dr. Weber, I thought you'd be the first to agree. Blackie's just loaded with talent. This young man is going right to the top. Surely you agree. Uh, what my opinion of his talents are has nothing to do with it. I want you very aware of one very important thing. Whatever you tell me. That at the end of 60 days, I expect this young man to be back leading a normal life. The 60-day uh, out clause is bilateral. What does that mean? It means, correct me if I'm wrong, Jake, it means at the end of 60 days, if things have not worked out, this guy's going to be back full-time with his studies. Is that all that's troubling you? Well, we can settle that right now. How? <laughs> well, like I said, I know talent. And I can say right here and now, that if Blackie does not succeed as I expect within 60 days, well, I'll be the most surprised woman in the world. There's no doubt about it, Doctor. Blackie is a winner. I know. Oh, Jesse, check it in for the evening. Anything exciting? Oh, you had a couple of messages here. Yeah. Oh, and there was a man who came by looking for you. He's in the cafeteria having coffee right now, but he'll check back. Did he say what he wanted? What he wants? Just that he works for the Delice uh, Gourmet Food Factory. Well, I will definitely see him then. Be in my office, thanks. Okay. You work for Delice Foods? Uh, yeah, I'm plant foreman down there, Jim McGill. Jim, how are you? Yeah. Please. Yeah. What can I do for you? Well, uh, it's like this, Commissioner. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what to call Should I call you commissioner or doctor or what? It doesn't matter what you call me. What's the problem? Well, it's my job. And the job to all the other guys down there at the plant. I'm genuinely sorry. But when the plant is approved, then you'll be back in your jobs. Yeah, well, when's that going to be? Uh, next week? Next month? Next year? Maybe never, huh? That happens to be up to Mr. Brock, and he knows exactly what has to be done to bring everything up for approval. Yeah, well, in the meantime, my men and I are starving, Commissioner. I mean, I got three kids to support. I got a wife to support. I can't do that. I've got no paycheck coming in. Again, I'm sorry, but it happens to be Mr. Brock's fault. I'm doing my job, that's all. Well, you did it, man. The seamer you condemned's been replaced. 
Why don't you just let it go at that and let us get back to work? Because there is other equipment that has to be replaced as well. Well, that equipment was just fine for a long, long time. A man died because apparently it wasn't. Oh, come on, Commissioner, get off it, would you? We're talking about guys here who can't feed their kids. What do you want to hurt us for? I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm trying to save lives. I'll give you something to think about. Let's say I give the okay and the plant can open without replacing that equipment and some more contaminated food is produced and it goes out on the marketplace and your wife buys some and she prepares it for your children. They eat it and they die. Did you ever think about it like that? No, not just like that. Then I suggest you do think about it just like that. And while you're at it, you can do me a favor. What? When you see Brock, I'm sure you will, you tell him what I said. <laughs>